Five Ways to Kill a Man by Edwin Brock. Part 1. Imagery. This poem is written in five parts, five stanzas, and each part, each stanza, describes a way to kill a man. I'd like to look in detail at each of those five ways. You might want to pause the video at the end of each stanza before going ahead and seeing the image that I suggest. There are many cumbersome ways to kill a man. You can make him carry a plank of wood to the top of a hill and nail him to it. To do this properly, you require a crowd of people wearing sandals, a cock that crows, a cloak to dissect, a sponge, some vinegar, and one man to hammer the nails home. As I say, you might want to pause the video here for a minute just to think about it. But something like this is probably the picture that will come to mind. If you come from a Christian country or you know something about the Bible story of Christ's crucifixion, then that should be fairly straightforward. But if you come from a different culture, you might find it more difficult to visualise. So let's look at the second stanza. Or you can take a length of steel, shaped and chased in a traditional way, and attempt to pierce the metal cage he wears. But for this you need white horses, English trees, men with bows and arrows, at least two flags, a prince, and a, a castle to hold your banquet in. Once again, the cultural context is very important. As a hint, you'd need to know something about the European Middle Ages. So the second stanza describes the jousting tournaments of the Middle Ages. And so to the next stanza. Dispensing with nobility, you may, if the wind allows, blow gas at him. But then you need a mile of mud sliced through with ditches, not to mention black boots, bomb craters, more mud, a plague of rats, a dozen songs and some round hats made of steel. And again, you'd need some cultural context to be able to make sense of that. And if you had that context, you would probably come up with this. Trench warfare during World War I. So, the next stanza. In an age of aeroplanes, you may fly miles above your victim and dispose of him by pressing one small switch. All you then require is an ocean to separate you two systems of government, a nation's scientists, several factories, a psychopath, and land that no one needs for several years. You're probably getting an idea of where this poem is going by now, and the next picture is perhaps easier to envisage because it's part of the cultural territory of all of us. That's right. He's talking about nuclear warfare. And so to the final lines of the poem. These are, as I began, cumbersome ways to kill a man. Simpler, direct, and much more neat is to see that he is living somewhere in the middle of the 20th century and leave him there. And this one is perhaps the easiest to imagine, but in other ways, it's the hardest of all. For the fifth way of killing a man, the poet suggests you don't actually kill him. You leave him where he is, in the middle of the 20th century, which is when the poem was written. But how could that be a way of killing a man? Follow the next two parts of this analysis to find out.